Now the Ford Mustang Mach-E has been around for a few years now, but perhaps in this 2024 model, there's been some radical changes to the underlying battery tech. Battery tech, which gives the BYD Blade battery a run for its money. The BYD Blade battery is of course often regarded as the current state of the art battery tech. But let me tell you more about the battery pack in this new Mach-E. Now, of course, the petrol heads were furious. Some of them are still furious four years later, since Ford decided to electrify the Mustang. They felt they've been cheated, they're being lied to. But you know what doesn't lie? Sales. Because since 2021, the electric version of the Mustang has been outselling its combustion equivalent. Why? Well, it all comes down to the electric tech, which we're diving into today. Welcome to another episode of The Future is Electric. Now, of course, when you're talking about the tech in a vehicle, you have to start from that underlying platform. Now, this, the Ford Mustang Mach-E, is built on the Global Electrified One platform. Now, that's a heavily modified version of the C2 platform, which underpins the Ford Focus and the Ford Kuga. But of course, this platform is built with electrification in mind. It allows for two battery size options, a smaller battery, and a bigger battery. But let me make things clear here. That smaller battery, by no stretch of the imagination, is small, particularly when compared to everything else that's available in the industry. The small battery is actually generally seen as what we get as a larger option in most other vehicles. So the batteries inside this car are pretty big. I'm gonna talk about that more in a second. And the platform also allows for a single or dual motor variants. In fact, there's four choices with this car, right? You have your small battery with a single motor or a dual motor, or your big battery with a single motor or a dual motor. And if those four choices are not enough for you, and the budget allows, you can go for this, the Mustang Mach-E GT, which delivers, frankly, 480 horsepower. And it's the version they've given me. Today. Now there may be one horse up front, but this GT model delivers 480 horsepower thanks to two identical permanent magnet synchronous electric motors in the front and in the back for an all wheel drive experience. Now these electric motors utilize something known as the hairpin winding technique. What does this mean? Well, this means that the copper wound inside the electric motors is wound in a particular fashion which allows them to compress more copper into the same given area. This results in more power, quite a bit more power. In fact, together the electric motors deliver 860 newton meters of torque. So you better buckle your seatbelt and hold on tight because from zero to 100 kilometers per hour in this GT model is just three 0.7 seconds. Of course, regen is one of those features which is unique to electric vehicles. It's the car's ability to recoup energy and put it back in the battery, energy which is otherwise wasted in an internal combustion car. Now, we've seen different flavors of regen on the channel, right? And Ford actually in this Mustang Mackey do something different, which I haven't seen yet from all the cars we've seen on the channel in the past two or three years. What do they do? Well, they have their one pedal driving mode, like a number of other brands, which I'll be trying out and giving you my feel of it and compare it to the other brands in the driving video. So make sure you subscribe with that notification bell because that video goes live right after this one. But perhaps the interesting thing here is you do not have control over the region, but rather the region is linked directly to the driving modes. So this is new. I have never seen this yet on the channel. Not sure how I feel about it, but I will definitely be experiencing it and sharing my thoughts in that driving video coming up next. Okay, let's talk about what range you can expect out of the Ford Mustang Mach-E. Now, as I mentioned, there's different models to choose from. Each of them is going to give you different ranges. Now, on the lower end, it starts at around 428 kilometers on a single charge. 
all the way up to 600 kilometers in the extended range versions. Now this is WLTP. So here in Malta, most of the time we achieve WLTP because our climate is ideal, but on a highway in colder temperatures, you can expect lower ranges than that. If you're getting this GT model, you can also expect lower ranges um, than that. But I don't think you're concerned about range if you're going for the GT model. All right. Let's talk about the high voltage battery. This is the most expensive and most important component of any electric vehicle. And with this new 2024 Ford Mustang Mach-E, there have been some major changes. In fact, there's a completely new battery going into this car. Mustang have not only changed, Ford rather, have not only changed the battery supplier from LG to CATL, but they're also changing the battery chemistry. In fact, the Ford Mustang Mach-E now utilizes LFP, lithium ion battery technology, moving away from the NCM. And in fact, Ford are probably the first of the legacy auto brands who have made this switch. We've already seen LFP batteries coming out of the Chinese made cars, but perhaps Ford now are the first brand with cars on the road, which are using LFP technology as well. So what does this all mean? So LFP technology versus the outgoing NCM, nickel, cobalt, manganese. Firstly, there's no nickel and no cobalt in LFP batteries. That makes the battery inherently cheaper, um, but it does mean the battery is heavier. So there are some advantages and disadvantages here. But what I like a lot about this battery is the cycle life. How many times you can charge and discharge this battery. And LFP batteries have a much, much longer cycle life when compared to NCM. In fact, where your typical NCM battery is rated for 8,500 charge cycles, your LFP batteries can be rated up 5,000 charge cycles plus. So this is a huge change, right? Now, Perhaps besides the battery chemistry, one very interesting thing happening here is this car is one of the first to use um, CATL's Killin 3.0 C2P, cell to pack technology. This is CATL's equivalent of the BYD blade battery. They go in direct competition here. And basically in this battery design, they're removing the idea of modules. So historically, but EV battery packs have been formed. You have battery cells, a lot of different battery cells. They're grouped into modules, and then various modules make up the battery pack. In this battery design, there are no modules. It's just cells going into a one-pack design. This means the battery cells themselves form a structural component, so the structural aspect of the battery can be removed. And another interesting thing, th interesting thing they do here is with regards to the cooling technology. So most EVs have utilized a cooling plate, which generally goes underneath the battery cells to keep them at the ideal battery temperature of 25 degrees Celsius. Now, in the Killin 3.0, they're actually taking a, a card out of the Tesla playbook because the cooling technology is right between the battery cells themselves. I like this a lot. I think it's a much better approach. If we just look at the um, way Teslas have gone on and how long those battery packs have lost and are lasting, I believe a lot of that can be attributed to the cooling technology, which Tesla again here were alone in doing. Tesla were one of the few brands which were cooling um, the battery cells rather than the, um, putting the cooling underneath the pack, which is what we've seen from everybody else essentially. And here in the CATL Killin 3.0 battery, which again, the Ford Mustang Mackie is using, basically the cooling right between the cells, which I like a lot. One note, however, this GT model, which is the top of the line performance, still sticks to the LG NCM batteries. Why? Because frankly, one disadvantage of LFP is you don't get the same amount of power. So definitely nice. Um, that they keep NCM for this one, at least for the time being. If you intend to own the Ford Mustang Mach-E, then what I'm about to explain regards charging is essentially important. Why? This car has, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it, a huge battery. Even the smaller battery variant of this car is huge. Bigger batteries 
mean longer charging times. So you have two charging options. You have your AC or your DC. Let's start with AC. So at home, you're going to be charging on AC. In most of the public network, you're going to be charging on AC. Now, best case scenario, you have a three phase supply. That is the case with the road network and it's sometimes the case at home and you may wish to upgrade your home supply to three phase with this car. What does that mean? Well, this car on AC on three phase charges at a maximum 11 kilowatts. That means the smaller battery will charge in around eight hours, larger battery, 10 hours. Now, if you do not have three phase and you have a single phase supply, then my next recommendation is to get a home charger, um, a 7.4 kilowatt home charger, but and this is the important thing. It has to be a smart charger, which can monitor your home consumption. What, what does this all mean? So in Malta, we have a 40 amp supply on single phase, a 7.4 kilowatt charger will take up 32 amps of those 40. So I've received messages and calls time and time again of people telling me I'm charging my car, but I'm keep tripping the meter and all the lights go out. That is going to happen with a 7.4 kilowatt um, charger on single phase. Unless it is smart. In a smart system, the charger is going to also monitor your home consumption. So if you turn on an air conditioning or the cooker, it's going to know that. And it's going to fluctuate the power going to the car so that your home doesn't trip the electricity meter and you're getting the best power possible to the car, whatever is left at that point in time. If you don't want to make that investment, then you can go for a 3.4 kilowatt home charger. Now, in that case, it's going to be a 23 hour charge on the smaller battery or a 29 hour charge on the larger battery. On that case, what I recommend, rather than these very long charging times, which to be fair, you're going to do once every three to four weeks in Malta. But if you don't want to charge once every three to four weeks and you want to charge, plug it in for a few hours once a week, then you can do that. And I'd recommend you do that. You charge once a week, you plug it in overnight and you're keeping the car in that 30 to 80 percent region, never going from zero to a hundred. Now, on a highway, you want to charge faster. That's where DC rapid charging comes in. And this car allows for a maximum 150 kilowatts on DC rapid charging. This means smaller battery, 24 minutes to charge, larger battery, around 47 minutes to charge. How does that compare to the competition? Well, against LFP competitors, it's actually on par. Against NCM competitors, especially at this price bracket, there are faster charging cars available. There is, of course, renewed interest in the Ford Mustang Mach-E, despite being released four years ago. Now, with this new revolutionary battery technology and a significant price cut, I think a lot of people are going to be looking at it. If you enjoyed this video or learned something new, make sure you smash that like button and share it with someone who will care to watch as well. Links for the socials are down below. I'd like to thank you for watching Maverick for the Technical and Gazan Zamit Motors as well as Ford Motor for their support with today's video. But as always, I hope I've convinced you that the future is electric.